Thank you very much. Okay, so I'll, hi everybody. So I start uh, uh, just saying a few words. Uh, so I've been knowing Fernando for uh, several years already, uh, since we have both been uh, active and living in Paris and uh, gravitating uh, like around IRCAM and, and so on. So I'm well acquainted with his music uh, and in the past months we have also been sharing thoughts about uh, is a research project. Uh, the topic of the project is uh, compositional strategies based on granular uh, paradigm. And uh, yeah, this topic speaks to me on many levels. Um, I, I've been working uh, with a um, lot with the idea of corpus based composition in audio and in symbolic domain. Uh, by means of concatenation and interpolation of small and medium-sized blocks. Uh, however, uh, this uh, has never become more than the application of a technique, uh, and it never questioned the classical top-to-bottom approach to composition. Uh, the case of Fernando is quite different. He is very influenced by the approach of Horacio Vagione, and he proposed a bottom to top approach where techniques that were normally operating in the signal are transferred on the symbol level and where the meso and macro levels manifests as emergence of a micro level. So I will let Fernando guide you through the story of his personal application of the granular paradigm and I will only raise a few points that seem important to me and uh, that uh, I think that may be fruitful uh, to the future development of his research. So point number one, uh, the buffer. The buffer is objet trouvé. Granular synthesis requires a minimum of one buffer. However, the relevance of this buffer can be easily obliterated by multiplying the number of buffers by reducing the size of a grain or simply by using some uh, more anonymous uh, material. Like for example, the Gabor-like grains that, that Xenakis use in uh, Analogic B. So this is like a granular synthesis has become sort of a, uh, like uh, is, is a, uh, like additive synthesis is subsumed into like a, a larger category. So granular synthesis like subsume uh, uh, additive synthesis in this case. In the music of Fernando that I know, on the contrary, actually, buffers are well-constructed entities, uh, in some cases, even historical artifacts. Uh, I'm thinking like, for example, in a piece of him, like uh, 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 there is a, like a very clear quotation of uh, uh, the adagetto of the seventh uh, Beethoven symphony. Hmm. Uh, and those uh, historical artifacts or well-constructed uh, buffers uh, gets discovered or concealed as the granulation, uh, the granulation as the piece actually unfolds. So that's the first point. Second point, which is like a little bit more conceptual, uh, and it's more related to uh, uh, Vagione, which is a source of inspiration for, uh, for Fernando. Uh, and it's the idea of uh, the network, uh, operating actually with the networks of uh, interrelated objects. Uh, and uh, those are really actually uh, actual words from, uh, from uh, Vagione. Uh, and with this technique, Vagione actually draws inspiration from uh, a paradigm coming from uh, information technology, uh, namely from uh, object-oriented programming. Main principles of uh, object-oriented programming are encapsulation, abstraction, inheritance, and polymorphism. Polymorphism allows different types of objects to share behaviors or pass through the same interface. So the subsumption of audio techniques under a bigger framework, so the use of granular paradigm on medias other than sound, which is a, uh, like, like a, a big point actually for Fernando, for, for Fernando in, his, 
latest pieces. Uh, that's a growing preoccupation in Fernando's work. Uh, this uh, could also maybe draw inspiration from this concept actually coming from uh, OOP, from Object Oriented Programming, the concept of polymorphism. So basically the idea that I can have like uh, several, uh, I mean, objects which are very different. I mean, I'm talking from uh, like from the point of view of a Lisper, which is not really an object oriented language, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so that, that, that's my limitation. But there is like a, uh, it, it's possible to do ob object oriented programming. So for example, you can have like a lot, like several, several objects, like sharing a sort of same ancestor, or same parent, and just use like the same sort of uh, uh, processing actually for uh, like function method actually for, for all, uh, all, all objects that have, objects that can, can really be different in the same way, like uh, we, we can actually uh, imagine to use uh, uh, the same sort of te technique for uh, different medias. So that's the second point. Third and last point, it's the role of a computer, actually, because, I mean, we are, we are talking every time about uh, 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 some, some variation, actually, some, some sort of computer-aided composition. Hmm. Uh, but Jonah, always him, is writing, in his writing, insists on the notion of interaction. <coughs> and he's quoting for this uh, uh, Terry Vinograd, the machine has to be thought as a mechanism with whom we interact and not as a mathematical abstraction. This notion is capital to understand the continental, so yeah, allow me this word, approach to the use of computer as a composition helper, uh, which has been the basis actually for the development of software like uh, Patchwork Open Music. Uh, Fernando's approach to algorithms is, is uh, like uh, uninhibited and undogmatic. And uh, his choice of uh, glass box systems where everything is, is accessible to the user over black boxes are part actually of this uh, like continental sort of tradition, which, which is like 40 year, years long. The tradition of computer aided composition as opposed to the one of uh, algorithmic composition. A tradition which is aimed to create composi compositional strategies that are conceived as a continuous feedback between the composer and the machine. So that's what, that was the third and last point. So now I, I, I would actually let Fernando speak. And uh... okay, great. Thank, thank you, Mauro, for your introduction, which is uh, very accurate. So I will try to give a general context to his presentation uh because this is kind of a um, local topic on a wider uh, research plan uh, so i will uh, try to address this uh, wider so uh, maybe more than um uh, actually subject this is um, the first theoretical frame for the research on which I am um, uh, taking a, an ontology of uh, Horacio Bagioni, which is composable space. Um, as you can see in the screen, uh, we can um, uh, talk about this uh, ontology as, or define it as a playground of object interactions and operations that are constructed on various superimposed planes. So, but the thing that is, is important is this, um, that objects are linked by operations and that the whole is forming an operational set. So you can see here um, a graphic which is uh, took from a paper from Alain Bonardi and Joe Sivitsky, which is, uh, which explain it maybe even, even better. Uh, the thing that I will, um, point out uh, that interests me um, and that defines me a lot is his uh, uh, idea of sound object, which is not just a sonic unit, but uh, more an active entity. So uh, that could be uh, that we can um, uh, uh, think this object that could be a function like an algorithm, a parameter list like scores or a succession of actions to be carried out. 
scripts or or also sounds uh, products as well as sources on which on the case of the uh, this idea of, of buffer as an object is very uh, important to me but this starting point I'm, I'm trying to think it is maybe interesting uh, to extend it uh, to different medius, mediums within an hybrid work so we could consider object networks also in a wider manner and include active entities which aren't sound based uh, even if we can apply similar operations to them as the sound based objects this idea of object as an active entity allows us to have maybe uh, similar objects that could react very differently regarding our uh, well if it's in computational methods instantiation or if it's in writing the process that we can uh, apply to them so uh, the notion of extended composable spaces address mainly this coexistence coexistence of different temporal regimes different mediums and practices in hybrid, wor hybrid works um, so my um, uh, this uh, relation with granular paradigm is, is already 10 years old on my practice. But this uh, um, increasing uh, irradiation of my uh, artwork is a little bit younger, you can see. It. So I see this um, concept as, as a potential startup model to approach multidisciplinary interaction and hybrid artwork. As more than a uh, kick of a start, uh, and I am trying, as uh, Mauro um, uh, told him very, very well, to imagine um, not, also, not, not only in my um, hybrid works, but also in works in collaboration with other um, artists of diverse disciplines, or also uh, um, scientists or technicians, etc. Um, and my idea is to see if we can imagine uh, a system more than a, a transparent and accessible than the figure of black, block, black box, which is borrowed from the first cybernetics from Norbert Wiener, Wiener, which is made uh, up of inputs and outputs uh, that is and constituting a linear work system. Uh, and so this idea of an open system with multiple inputs, I think it will be more uh, profitable to collaborative and hybrid artworks. So I will uh, really f uh, fast um, explain in my first um, research questions, which are always uh, I, uh, being tested and, and proved in practice uh, and in research. So which kinds of methodological approaches might be adequate for creating new knowledge about this heterogeneous composable space of hybrid works? The second one is how my research project can approach the various modes of interaction or overlapping in artworks that convince several medius, mediums, practice and time regimes. And how to address also the problem of different time regimes of practices when you are overlapping uh, more dynamic or sequenced uh, linked to sound based uh, works uh, and at the same time with more static uh, time uh, regime as in installations or visual art. Uh, so, and the last they will be reduced, I hope, is how to approach specific ways of making decisions in a transmedia creative context involving several actors. So, uh, I have in, in my research a kind of a bottom-to-top strategy also. So, my idea is to begin with simple observations, to start from a specific topic situated in the context of some based artistic practice observe how I apply techniques and strategies from, comp com from compositional practice in other mediums and inversely how techniques from or based on other practice are applied in my own musical works. To look at their specific ways of interacting or juxtaposing or uh, feedbacking, 
and to observe how different mediums practice and temporalities coexist. Um, so why to focus for this uh, first seminar in granular paradigm? Uh, well, mainly because it's uh, a paradigm that, that I'm using uh, and that includes a lot of different techniques and compositional strategies based on that. And so I thought that to me will be the easiest uh, or, or more, more logical way to start seeing and observing how we apply different uh, compositional strategies to some basic uh, artwork and hybrid artwork. Uh, so this conception of, of time is already um, conscient. So uh, that is the, the answer to, to this uh, question. So after this uh, brief um, uh, uh, context that I'm giving, I we will start uh, with this seminar. And so we are talking about granular paradigms, so we must to at least uh, mention uh, granular synthesis, because granular paradigm, of course, is wider. There is granular synthesis, there is granulation of a sound, symbolic granulation, etc., etc. So we, I will just address uh, the main uh, points. No, I, I will. The, the idea is not to explain uh, to the audience uh, in a very deep in way how it works, but just to point out the things that I'm that are influencing me in the uh, histor history of uh, granular synthesis. The first that uh, mentioned this possibility was Norbert Wiener, uh, and is the, the most uh, important thing that is uh, derivated from quantum physics. So um, the uh, then the physicist Dennis Gabor, who, which was a specialist in theory of communication also, and created the hologram. He theorized in uh, 47, uh, uh, with his article Acoustical Quanta and the Theory of Hearing. The important thing that he addressed uh, the terminology of sonic quanta. So it is addressing microscopic level of uh, sign. And after that, there is, uh, f but to me, f but there is more than that, but that in the history, four uh, very important persons. Uh, the first one, of course, is uh, Yanis Senakis, <laughs> um, who talked uh, about uh, already in the 60s or maybe before, in articles that which after words will uh, make part of his uh, formalized music uh, book. So uh, Senakis both discuss, discuss and use this, this, uh, this atomic level sound count, uh, quanta, often an enveloped simple waveform like sine wave or simply a bell-shaped sound impulse called a wavelet to create statistically shaped density clouds. So there is this duality in the beginning between wavelet and grain. Uh, but um, the thing to to really uh, point out is this conception of um, micro time. Uh, so uh, maybe this uh, we will just go into that. Granular synthesis as a method. Uh, maybe the simplest explanation is that it's a method by which sounds are broken into little corpuscles, which we call grains, which are redistributed, redistributed and reorganized to form other sounds. Uh, this concept, I mean, it's also it's a, um, a form of amplitude modulation because uh, for avoiding clicks, the first thing to apply to every a wavelet or grain is an amplitude envelope. And, but you must imagine this uh, uh, multiplied by 
a lot. Okay, so this is a very um, uh, graphic um, quotation of uh, Yanis Senakis on this article who will be part of formalized music, but they was first published in the Grabe Center uh, in a um, Deutsch um, review, in a German review. So hecatombs of poor sounds are necessary for the creation of a complex sound. This one should be imagined as to be display of fireworks sparkling in all colors. <laughs> Each luminous point of which appearing and disappearing instantaneously on the background of the black sky. But there will be so many luminous spots that firework and they will organize in a such way that their rapid and swarming succession, succession creates forms. Slowly uncoiling volutes or in the contrary, short explosions inflaming the whole, the whole, the whole sky. A sufficient number of instantaneously appearing and disappearing spots will form a luminous line. It's very talking, this uh, quotation. Uh, the, uh, uh, he also addressed, and also uh, Bajone and Barry Truax and uh, Curtis Rhodes, this um, idea that uh, is more than a starting point for a given musical work than a scientific fact, uh, this theory. So it's more an intuitive representation than, a, than of a scientific consistence, consistence. And it's consequently only an hypothesis rather than establishes scientific fact. Uh, but it's a first um, approach uh, to a technique which has beneath a conception of uh, musical time. Uh, both uh, Tsenakis and Invasione are maybe sometimes using different words, so paradigm or approach. Uh, actually, to be um, um, exact, uh, Tsenakis has brought only two pieces. Uh, if I remember well, uh, with a proper um, granular synthesis. One is the analogic B that Mauro evokes, and analogic A, which is instrumental. Analogic B is a, a, a tape uh, piece, which is uh, made entirely in with tape. So Xenaxis had to cut with scissors <laughs> uh, really um, um, minimal uh, uh, parts of this tape to, after that, reorganize it with uh, statistical procedures. So you must imagine the the, quanti the amount of time that he needs to uh, to do that. In analogic A, it's more an uh, instrumental on which are, uh, if I recall, is nine string that they're doing pizzicati uh, uh, very short and, and generating clouds. So, I will also try to evoke the uh, most common attributes that you can find in, I mean, there is a lot of, of, of granular synthesis procedures or interfaces on which uh, are prepared and it can change from one to another and it depends also in ourselves. But I will address uh, those that I think that are most important because they will talk to myself as a composer and inspire my way of composing. So the rate and the direction of the grain so how it will read uh, the little chunk of audio signal that is uh, uh, playing. So you can choose it to do it work, uh, forward and backward. And the transversal, transversal rate is the line time, just to see it like that. And uh, the three maybe more, imp the more important is the grain size, size the do duration and the length. Uh, so it's the length of the grain envelope 
And we, of course, it's usually in uh, milliseconds. It could be in seconds, but uh, the time unit to, me to measure all that is in milliseconds. So we, we are in the micro time level of uh, signal of signal. And then uh, very another very important is the grain rate. So how many grains you will have per second. So that will uh, define uh, the, the whole emerging color of the reconstituted sound. And then you have, well, you can imagine a lot, but I will just uh, address those that I that I inspired to me for sine body granulation and even to manipulate uh, for micromontage even. So transposition or harmonization. I think that I must not to explain that and that the stereo location. So that is a um, Indiana University professor that has made this very also um, this graphic, which is uh, very clear. So you can see here the grain envelope, which is also the grain signs and the timeline. So the traversal rate and direction. So that was the, um, uh, this brief introduction. Um, and right now we can uh, start the discussion. If you do not hesitate to make uh, questions or, or observation if you need it, please, Mauro. Uh, the, uh, the interesting that is a compositional paradigm or, a or method. Uh, that is the, the most important thing to point out. Uh, so, we are addressing complex sound objects. Osa Senakis uh, also uh, uh, cited emerging high order sonorities. So, it is uh, complex sound objects which are resulting for the manipulation of micro time uh, parameters. And so these micro time parameters are affecting the result on an emerging texture, uh, which is this uh, sound. And how uh, Mauro uh, was very um, clear, this is a uh, bottom to top strategy. So we are starting uh, on the micro time to go up to the emergent sound. I, another thing which is uh, very important to me is this capacity of switching among time scales. So we, we can have in the same piece micro time operations uh, the, um, doing on parallel with meso time and macro time uh, phenomena. But in a, in a poetic term, the thing that for me is the most influential is this idea of reconstitution of redistribution or reorganization of a sonic source. Uh, that was and still uh, have been is being very inspiring to me. And as also Mauro pointed out, the in very important thing is that we are taking a model uh, which is based in micro time. I am taking this model from some pieces and applying it. Uh, of course, it's inspired. There is no a linear. Uh, way of interpreting that that is on which the composer uh, has to create his own world, his own techniques. But the most important thing is this category category transferred from audio signal to si symbol. And when I'm talking, when I'm saying symbol, is the the level of the note. So you are going to the sub symbolic, so beneath the note, so beneath the the hearable. Uh, perceptual, perceptible uh, level to the symbolic, which is the time which musicians uh, uh, think. And so as a composer, it's also a very important thing to me is this ambiguity or switching between, between uh, figures, so gestalt, instrumentals, gestalt, or even electronics to result on textures and sometimes the overlapping of uh, both levels. So
So, as you pointed out, uh, the very most important concept is this idea of buffer. To me, it's a virtual object. Uh, virtual is not in the sense of uh, <laughs> internet. Virtual in the sense of that it's uh, an object which is beneath and that we can hear or maybe not hear, but it's the source of uh, every uh, resultant sound. Uh, I, Mauro, you, when we, in one of our discussions, you pointed out that this uh, conception is very inf influenced on the uh, Max MSP interface. Uh, I'm, re I'm recalling <laughs> what is that? No. Yeah, I don't, I don't know actually because I, I'm, uh, probably it's. Uh, I mean, you need to have a buffer in order to have a granular yeah. synthesis. So probably it's not just Max MSP, but. Um, I have impression that for uh, it's it's what I said in the very beginning actually like yeah. uh, uh, for you the buffer is like the most important thing it's uh, even yes. more uh, it's even more important than uh, granulation itself uh, if I yes. can say because yes. especially especially working with um, uh, working with um, means uh, which are other than uh, electronic music like when you're working with with players uh, uh, of course yes. you're not working into the into the micro level you're working already on the on the note level on the meso structure yes yeah on the meso structure so basically what you're doing um, yeah it's uh, you're taking actually the metaphor li like uh, the uh, like granular synthesis as a metaphor uh, to do some um, yeah, symbolic sort of uh, granulation yes. on, a, yeah. on, a, on a symbolic buffer, which is like a, it's, it's literally like a piece of a, of a score. Uh, yeah. Of, of, yeah of, your, of yours or of, of someone else or, uh, yeah. Or both, yeah. The, the, both, the, yeah. yeah, the whole idea is exactly that, is uh, that um, we have uh, like a, first uh, material which is very construct that could be uh, mainly instrumental that could be uh, a sonic unit but also that could be a list of actions uh, uh, but I used to talk a lot about um, an hybrid virtual object with different levels of so we have uh, the noise part reference, uh, the more hearable sound part reference, and the reference sounds. So uh, quotations or style quotations or found objects, because in a lot of pieces I'm just getting a, a sound object. Um, but it's, it is, like you say, it is an idea on which I am I'm having a virtual object or that I can deploy in time, that I can, uh, uh, on which I can do several operations, but the, the most significant are related with this uh, granular paradigm. So uh, when when I pointed out the the question of the the size of the grain, um, I, 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 I can relate it to to this concept of window. So you can imagine on a virtual object, normally I, I, I divide the object in onset and on offset. So I take uh, the minimal um, time unit that, uh, that a human being could play if it's instrumental. Um, and I divide this object and uh, uh, given the the part on which I will read of this big object, that is what we can call a window. Okay, that is very important because the size of this window over the time will uh, determine the the a, a big process uh, on which this virtual object unfolds. Uh, and this idea. Um, it has very um, um, hearable consequences because um, regarding the if I am stretching this window or if I am uh, enlarging this window, we can have this perception of time is uh, stretching or <laughs> enlarging. So you can uh, 
the window is kind of our uh, a device that will allow us to travel in time on this virtual object. Um, and there is also others. I am just pointing out uh, very precise parameters. Not all. I mean, uh, in every piece there is things that are being modified, and and is uh, and it's not maybe the the to me the most important thing that I am thinking. It's already uh, an approach and a technique that I am had incorporated over. Um, uh, at least the past 10 years. And of course, uh, I'm not the first on doing that. Um, just in order to quick compare, I, I mean, the first composer that is coming to my mind is, of course, Bernard Lang. And Bernard Lang was very influenced by the work of the video artist, the Austrian video artist Martin Arnold, uh, which is. Uh, playing with that we call looping, but this recurrence of uh, just a um, um, founded footage uh, allows to think us that he's also having the same or a similar conception of, of time uh, on which we are traveling from in within one object with a device. So as a musician, another core concept to me is the cycle. Uh, the cycle is um, is defined is defined by time and not by its contents. Uh, that is uh, very important because um, we can have uh, maybe sometimes the same material. But regarding the operations that we are doing on this material, the result uh, will could be very different. So, is as in uh, computer uh, uh, music on, or, or audio signal treatment, this idea of instantiation that we can have a similar object on which we have uh, applying different operations, or different object with same operation, but having different results. So that is this concept of an sonic entity unity, uh, active uh, unity of the object. But my idea is that uh, normally the time is already articulated. So normally my objects are thought in a way on which I'm already projecting how I will deploy this on time. Okay. Uh, so, um, can, sorry, can you explain a little bit this, sir? Because uh, <laughs> I think it's an important uh, thing. Yeah. So, uh, par uh, as an example, when I have a kind of um, uh, a buffer to me, could at the same time in parallel have instrumental, if there, is, if it's an, a piece with instrument, uh, electronic sounds, or just operations. And uh, for example, if it's instrumental, I know that I have a portion of time which is my virtual object, which can be, I don't know, 10 seconds, 5, 20. But already within the object, I'm thinking about a, a kind of timbral process. So I can pass to, from noise to sound to reference in a very short time and then think how to deploy that in time. But I'm subdividing that in different cycles, time cycles, on which it's not a question of, of marking time as, I don't know, as in Ligeti concert or, or, or have polymetric stuff. It could be also a result on that. But the idea is that in each of these cycles uh, serves to me to articulate time and to know which kind of operations I will apply to the object. Okay, it is understood. Or is it more clear to you right now? Yes, yes, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. So it's an idea that the 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 cycle is a time articulation uh, unit, and and it's not defined by the metric or by the content or by the accents or whatever. And another thing is. Uh, well, phase because uh, normally I can have buffers 
several buffers which are uh, coexisting at the same time, but they have or a buffer on which we have several voices on it. And uh, I can, of course, play with the phase of these cycles. So changing the length of each cycle or choosing cycles which are not having the same amount of time. Okay, so which are defacing. We must think that not. I'm not addressing the face as uh, as a parameter of of, of audio signal uh, manipulation, but more as a writing technique or an edition technique. And so when I am mixing instrumental uh, or video or other things, uh, they can share uh, cycles length or not, but even in parallel, I doing operations with a logic, even if I am opposing a meso time, meso structures uh, based uh, objects with microstructure based objects. And so with electronic uh, uh, treatment of audio signal, uh, but often I relate both in a way. I hope that I will arrive to that. Um, I could cite an example of instrumental, uh, an instrumental uh, technique that works with face in a um, British composer who, who name is Bryn Harrison, who is using since before me this, uh, this idea of, of, of facing. Okay. Um, so let's go to the music. Okay, I lost. Sorry. Huh? So this is uh, Neon Pig is a 2017 piece for amplifier ensemble, speakers, transducers, and electronics. I must to. Right now I will. Uh, Okay, so I will show you some, sorry, some uh, sketches, some preliminary sketches. Well, this one is not very, so I have, sorry, yes. I have a, a buffer who is, I actually have three buffers in, in, in the first, uh, three instrumentals. There is also electronic, I, I will address just the instrumental part in this case. I have three uh, uh, parallel buffers that, that are working on this uh, piece. And so the ensemble is divided in three groups. So that is my instrumental buffer. In this case, it's 24 uh, eight notes at this rate. So it's a very short amount of time, which will be a uh, display I don't recall exact, exactly how much time is uh, during this uh, process, but it's at, at least eight or nine, nine or ten minutes. So I'm doing ten minutes music from a ten second uh, uh, object. Okay, and of course, in every uh, buffer, I'm trying to uh, relate things between buffers and to, of course, already project a figure which will contains uh, uh, specific colors that will uh, define the immersion texture, okay? But then not all, not, not also the content, but also the operations that I applied. So if the size of the window, the separation of the symbolic grains, that is, has an effect, a, a direct uh, effect on the emergent texture, emerging texture. And there is also a kind of, it's not really linear, but we can imagine that, um, that more the window is, um, uh, bigger the window, more we are going for a to a symbolic to a mesostructure 
uh, perception, more to a figure, we can start to hear kind of figure or motifs or gestalts, if you want, that are coming from a, f a first part on which when, when the window is very little and uh, regardless of the operation that I'm doing with, the, with this chunk of, of music, but that on which the perception just can hear this emerging texture. So they, you have this switching going from texture to figure. So that is the first group, that is the second group. So as you can see, there is, of course, uh, relationships between them. And of course, there is hidden metrics in a way. Okay. So you can have already written accelerandos or retardandos or, or, or different uh, metrics. So there is some instruments that are playing long notes, other shorter, etc. And there is a general gestalt uh, of this. Um, so this this third group on this piece is the group of the long notes, <laughs> as you can see. Okay. Uh, well, that is formal uh, stuff, but okay, I will um, show you just a little bit of the score really fast, not really fast, but so in order that you can see. So if you remember my buffer, I have in every voice, which is every voice here is an instrumental, it's an instrument. Uh, I have different ways of reading these little chunks of the buffer. So there is, if we can metaphorically evoke a granular synthesis, there is uh, different grain rate repartitions. Okay. Sorry, I need to take some water. So. At the beginning, we have a texture which is kind of disaggregated, very granular, <laughs> if kind of. And then, uh, and of course, as I told you, there is cycles that are um, uh, helping me create a structure, and these cycles are instantiation cycles. Okay, so and. Uh, um, the cycles could have different uh, instantiation, and I also I can filter voices. I, I mean, I can once that I have my canvas, then I am very uh, flexible on on the way that I will apply it. So, so that is a starting point on which I am already imagining uh, a passage in a process that normally is. Of course, switching between this emerging texture to the figures, but within the figures, I, in this case, I'm passing to from a noise a scratchy sound to a more defined uh, sound. And in the electronics part, uh, in parallel, I am using um, from sometimes granular synthesis, and I am sometimes I'm doing similar and parallel operations. So aggregating or disaggregating and uh, of course working a lot with the rate uh, the, of the, so the quantity of grains in a cycle okay and its separation so I having kind of a first statistical approach on which I know more or less the part of silence and the part of sound in any in uh, any uh, in every uh, uh, given uh, voice. Okay. Is this intuitive or is this, uh, I'm starting always with a kind of simpler and linear idea, so in order that I can uh, predict a little bit results. And after this kind of modeling or experiment, I am adjusting. Uh, so sometimes I have very clear some things, and sometimes, sometimes during the composition, I am taking decisions which are. Uh, emerging <laughs> from the from the activity okay so as you can see the um, 
is not a linear process on which the separation and the size of the window is uh, going linear. So I have, if you can also imagine this metaphor, I have also waves on these parameters. So the rate, the quantity, etc. And also sometimes I could do transposition, harmonization, etc., etc., etc. So I have a kind of different operation that will uh, be more uh, that will define the emerging uh, sounds, uh, and they will be as in, as important as the as the sound itself. Okay. So yeah. just yeah. May I say something? And uh, I mean, knowing this piece, uh, I also have the impression. Maybe it's a, it's a just a, just my impression, but. Uh, uh, that you are also interpolating things like uh, yes. the, the grain is not like a unity and it's uh, completely cutted and separated from the rest. But every time you arrange to actually to create yes, like, uh, yes, okay, yeah. But it's, I I mean I didn't want to <laughs> got in the thing of interpolation because it's already another big subject. But yes, it's one of my uh, predict uh, my the techniques that I that is recurrent in my work. So normally I'm thinking about blocks objects which are interpolating in time. Then the ways of they are relating is part of the, of the, of the writing. So, and it could even contradict <laughs> the, the initial idea of interpolation because sometimes I'm blurring the, the, the borders between. So, and that could be, uh, mm, I mean, imagining on one, particular day of the composition and, and the other day it could affect the next, but uh, it's, it, it was not in the first, uh, in my first canvas of material and, or in my first operational set of objects, okay? On which I have my objects and my operations, okay? But so yeah, I will... Yeah. Yeah, just, just one quick uh, question, actually, because yes. we were talking before about like... Uh, uh, a sort of a, a bottom to top uh, approach where actually the micro levels is like uh, uh, yeah. creating by emergence the macro, yes. macro level. Uh, but what, it, what, what is exactly actually your, your way of working? Because like, you, uh, for, for example, for this piece, like you, you created, you, you pre-compose like the three uh, different yes. buffers and then uh, you started actually like by hand, like doing. Uh, no, no, no. I, I, I have. I, I mean, I have. Uh, as I, I have some path with her, um, uh, but I try to leave myself. Uh, I mean, I create a kind of playground, and I try to leave a little bit of freedom there. So no, sometimes I have path more than algorithms because it's, it's a time path there i'm not putting there the operation that i will apply to the to the buffer okay so i'm just knowing more or less how much time it will occupy on this on this case is i am just addressing one of the buffers which is in three parts and e each part has different layers and okay, I'm so not for example, you are saying like I'm okay for this uh, section. I'm playing like with the, the second half of the first buffer, and I, I'm like reading uh, that so something like that. Yeah, or, or maybe I have a um, kind of even if a linear or, or not linear, but maybe some, sometimes it's kind of sine waves on mm -hmm. which I am uh, stretching or enlarging the window size or the grain rate or etc. So I know more or less that I'm starting an, an, in a point. Sometimes it's in the middle, sometimes it's in the first part, sometimes it's in the last part. So it allows this, this idea of virtual object, it allows you to travel <laughs> on your object and that the piece at the end is, is, is a kind of, uh, it is that, it's a travel uh, on mm -hmm. the object and that you can make emerge different sound dramaturgies. Uh, so, the thing that I know is the starting point, more or less the velocity of the of the size of the window, uh, etc. And right now I'm just addressing the instrumental part. I'm because there is a lot of relationships when there is electronics, but that is a subject which is 
enormous. So I, I choose to address the instrumental size or, or, or parts or even micro time. So let's hear a little bit of... Uh, okay, if he wants to sound. Yeah. Just that is the beginning of the piece. So uh, the the whole poetical idea is to have a, a big object which is at the same time changing and repeating all the time. And on which the the important thing is sometimes the velocity of change also. So how we and the most important thing is this kind of scale switching, uh, time is, uh, scale switching. Um, uh, in this uh, particular piece, I mean, my, my poetic uh, starting point was to describe uh, a, a kind of um, imaginary animal and, and parts of this animal and how I will show this part. So every big buffer is a part of this animal that I'm seeing. It's just a poetical uh, starting up uh, approach. So, I will show you um, another piece which is, sorry, more recent. Contracolpo, which is um, uh, um, a very recent piece. I don't know how to translate Contracolpo. I have Italians here, but maybe, did you know, Alessandro, how to translate? I mean, it's like, like, like counter-attack, it could be also, or uh, one of the, s the kind of, of the s uh, uh, meanings. Be why that? Because normally it's a very basic setup on which I have a stereo N setup. Knock there. Knock what? Knock okay, me. great. Okay, super. So in this piece, uh, I have hybrid instruments, okay? which is very also b often in my music. So there is a saxophone with, a, with an sp and a speaker on his belt, uh, on which I am uh, sending uh, to this um, uh, speaker uh, just noise, basically, just white or, or brown or pink noise. And then in another part, I have two kind of materials. So I have just noise, voice samplers, and recorded feedback. 
and the second part. But the first part, which is the the important, the the saxophone is filtering the noise. So is use it more as a filter this instrument with a limited name of positions. And the idea is this imitation of the filtering both or this feedback with the condenser with the condenser microphone on the snare. So regarding the sound that I am playing and the resultant sound which is <laughs> very uh, uh, airy uh, stuff it will be more or less related with the kind of filter that the sax will apply to the noisy sound, okay? And, uh, well, I don't have the, um, the, the here, the, sorry, the sketches, uh, but uh, if I show you quickly the, the uh, score, so he, in the second part is you have the uh, the mic and that is the surface on which part of the of of the um, instrument they, uh, it will be uh, played uh, the pressure of the mic the direction and this part is in this part i have this the sound i have just five types of sounds three types of, no of noises one which is voice and the other which is recorded feedback and so the kind of filter okay and so i have al al also a buffer i have two buffers actually in this piece uh and it's also this in this one is a very it's for that that i choose because it's a very simple approach i have just windowing i'm not using separation of the grains or nothing so we feel very clearly the how the time uh, is uh, stretching in a way, so enlarging, okay? And I am passing, so in here the buffer is, is, is also important, not just because of the acoustic contents, but I am since some time also including the gesture uh, on the, so it's very important to see <laughs> in a way also the gesture in this case of, of the of the microphone but i'm uh, in other uh, recent compositions these uh, buffers are, are at the same time acoustical and, and gestural <laughs> in a way and then i will talk on how it could be applied in image or or in or in other kind of mediums i uh, was this past year at villa medicis and i even had done uh, graphic poems on which I have buffers <laughs> and ways of reading, but they're, they're not sequenced in time. So uh, it's, a, it's, a it's a kind of method that I can approach things that are not, 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 not just not based sound, but they're not even time-based objects, okay? So as you can see, well, I will just show you a little bit of the... Um, Okay. It was created I, during the COVID, so I, I was not there. Just show you a further point because if not, it will be even. So, right now, the buffer is already more deployed. Uh, 
and so on and so on. I I think that you maybe you got you got the idea already. So uh, this uh, also particular time conception right now is applied to hybrid uh, instruments and a performance which is also just well. Okay, right now <laughs> this one is a kind of a conceptual piece, a conceptual series of pieces on which I had. It is more more important the the process than the result. That was the uh, whole idea. So it's if you want, f it could be fluxus <laughs> influenced. So the idea is to have. Uh, I, I had a commission for for it was during the pandemic. So for a a, a, a festival in which they they had created a radio, in order to to do some uh, audio based uh, uh, um, works. And they they commissioned me that really a couple of weeks before the date. So my idea is to have a starting point and on each of the uh, studies, I starting starting with the I actually here is is why I'm choosing that. It's very paradigmatic in my work. I have two different, very different, very contrast materials. Okay, and the whole idea of this study is to put aside a portion of a speech or of a discourse and a portion of a, of a, a reference object. So it's a, a part of a classical piece, okay? And the whole idea uh, came to me as a joke at the beginning, because the first of one, the name is Barrow Queer, and I am playing an eight second uh, um, Corelli's uh, sample uh, for a concerto grosso G minor, I don't recall which one, and an eight second sampler of a Judith Butler speech. Yes. And so I'm adding uh, uh, from one to another different operations, and the idea is to have a, so I have Baroqueer classic, so the mix of classic and sick, and of course it, there is um, uh, Foucault and um, I don't recall the other. Well, uh, this one is modern nihilism, and so I have uh, a sample of uh, of Loiseau uh, de Feu, the Stravinsky, and because I'm talking about ni nihilism, um, well, you will recognize <laughs> the voice of of Celan. So in this piece. I am using in a very simple way. Well, even if it's not uh, doing edited, it's do it with with a patch. It's automat automatized, uh, but it's a very simple patch on which I'm just uh, increasing uh, the size of one window and decreasing the size of the other window in an opposite uh, way. So it's very it's a very simple piece on which I have this hybrid object, which is a result of both different samples, which are just connected of, 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 for this idea of, of the name. <laughs> and, uh, well, uh, sorry, I, I don't know how, I don't have the, uh, give me a minute. So I will show you a little part of this piece. Sorry, I don't know how, ah, okay, it's here. <laughs> Ah, uh, why? Sorry, it's coming. So the Stravinsky part is a little chunk, which is... And the speech. Oh, 
Patrick Wagner. Or, j'en ai eu 12 patrons. Euh, 12 métiers, 12 mi 13 misères. J'étais chez Dacteur, j'étais chez Raymond, j'étais chez Wagner. Or, j'en ai eu 12 patrons. Euh, 12 métiers, 12 mi 13 misères. J'étais chez Wagner. Or, j'en ai eu 12 patrons. Euh, 12 métiers, 12 mi 13 misères. Or, j'en ai eu 12 patrons. Euh, 12 métiers, 12 mi 13 misères. Euh, 12 patrons. Euh, 12 métiers, 12 mi 13 misères. Okay, so short piece, which on, on which there is, well, the, the result is not the, the most important, but more is the process. And so, that is a, no, oh, sorry, okay, that is a very different uh, thing. So, uh, being in Villa Medici's, uh, I had the opportunity to, to do a site specific installi installation. Uh, on the vineyard of Villa Medicis. So the the vineyard had uh, eight rows uh, and I hide or dispose in each row a series of piezo speakers. And uh, I was aware of the environment, uh, more or less of the acoustical environment uh, in the in this place. Um, so, basically, in this piece, how the, the, the granular paradigm uh, was applied. Uh, it was in the, um, in the uh, contents, not just because there is granular synthesis uh, uh, from times, but there is also this question of overlapping of cycles of different... Uh, uh, sizes and to create an emerging object uh, purely electronical uh, which is interacting with the with the acoustic ambience in a way no it's not really interacting I'm sorry it's uh, faking an interaction <laughs> with the acoustic uh, environmental acoustic and the other important point in this case is that uh, for spatialization which is done with ambisonics, there is some parts on which given the velocity of the curves that I control with, uh, with oscillators, with low frequency oscillators, there is a sensation of, of, of clouds moving on the, of granular clouds moving around the, uh, the installation. And here you can see how I apply some of these methods of the paradigm in a piece on which time uh, it's not the same, it's not a piece on, in a concert. Uh, so the, the possibility of approach of, uh, to the piece for the audience is not in this wave of, of critical distance that they, by being in a chair and, and hearing, but they can of course, change the the perception of, of sound and moving and the well the, the the sound is a twenty minutes loop, but it was uh, ongoing. So uh, there is a um, a time regime which is very diverse than uh, instrumental and uh, mixed music, 
but the paradigm is still operating beneath. So I will just show, I mean, there is a, just a video, I cannot show, of course, that you, you cannot hear the, the, the spatialization, but more see the space. There was workers this time who approached me and, and here was very touching. As, as you can see, uh, it was in October, so the vineyard was very... In the sound there is granular synthesis actually. Also. Well, but there is other kind of synthesis. There is sampling synthesis also. Voices and etc. Okay. Okay, let's sorry. <laughs> uh let's um, well, I have uh, I mean uh, yesterday we have a concert Mauro that you could uh, you couldn't uh, hear but uh, in this concert, there was already pieces on which uh, there was uh, there was audiovisual pieces of that I made, on which there was this conception of uh, overlapping two cycles between sound and image, two different sized cycles. But uh, in every cycle, the operations that I'm applying to the material is uh, different, and the way that I'm reading and the starting point of the reading, uh, etc. But there is the same conception. And, uh, well, here is a, I don't, I am not strong with jitters. This, this is a passage that a friend which is present in this room helped me to do. Thank you. <laughs> but the idea in this passage, I mean, it's not a piece, no. It is, it was a model for, uh, for experimenting stuff. But you can see here you have different length loops for each row of the reconstituted image, which is, I took a Mickey Mouse example here. So the image is, in this time, is reconstituted in just in three rows, which are looping at different uh, speeds. Here I can also choose the direction if it's going just forward and backward, or just forward and backward. Uh, but the idea that I had, well, of course there is the playing with color and colorimetry, there is a lot of things that are more important. The idea was to divide the screen in a lot of rows and to reconstitute an image uh, by uh, uh, rows which, I, which are reading chunks of, the, of, the, uh, of this... Uh, on this case, this is an example with the Mickey Mouse <laughs> film. But this, uh, it was also intended for think uh, uh, image in this case, and I have the bar procedure which is the same. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, Mauro. So I will. Uh, we are arriving to the last part of the. Uh, so I will um, do a, a, a quick uh, final uh, uh, step on which I will just uh, evoke the research uh, work that I am uh, doing right now. They are very, very different. This idea from bottom to top strategy allows me to start with particular and very focused topics and problematics. And uh, the idea is in to the end of this doctoral program is maybe a right to a kind of epistemic level on which maybe I will uh, make emerge uh, a wider uh, and uh, connection which resumes uh, uh, the topics and the problematics. One of them is uh, it's a video article uh, and I, I choose to, I mean, the thing was not to address the pandemics, but pandemics give me a particular context because I was in a, in a long-term residence. I was uh, in, in Villa Medici with uh, 
uh, artists from different disciplines. And because of this uh, pandemic, we had windows on which we could have uh, concerts at the beginning and at the end, but in the middle we could do anything, and there was anything to do also in terms of cultural programming. And so we create with the, with the other uh, residents um, a multimedia online review. Um, but also in the beginning and the end, I have also uh, more installation and, and expositions or, and activities that normally I don't have so often access. But because of this kind of craziness of the pandemic that it will change the, the things, I could really feel with my body how I'm passing from one uh, uh, organizational uh, time regime to another, or maybe the, both at the same time. And so the idea is, of course, related with this idea of address uh, anti-mediality on, on a extended composable space. And uh, so the idea is just to observe this overlap or interaction or feedback of these different art practice regimes that are responding to different organization of work time and to just to tell how it affects my, uh, my, my own uh, body, so the somatics of this. And there is other which is really far away, but it's always contained in this. It's a project which, is, uh, which was delayed for the COVID also, because I couldn't uh, meet uh, as, as we want with the mathematician on the, the time to meet. So this project is about uh, create a compositional tool uh, for a composition for, for piano, electronics uh, and uh, video. And the idea is to apply uh, a mark of change for different parts of the work. So for the instrumental part, for the audio signal treatment maybe, and also for the, for the image. I don't know if we will uh, arrive to that. The, but the, um, the project is uh, for starters to document how we are shaping this tool and its interface. And after that, to produce also a paper about the whole process, uh, how and how we feedback and how we shape and how he uh, uh, applies the marker and how I will ask things regarding to my necessities uh, as a composer. There is also, of course, other projects I, that I will not evoke because I'm not working on it right now. <laughs> so, but that is this uh, both project that I are that I'm doing. Great. Thank you for the uh, overview. Uh, that's really fantastic. Um, I think we go for two hours. Uh, thank you for the overview. That's fantastic. <laughs> um, we're going to uh, end at 12. So uh, what I'm wondering right now is Moro. Do you have any thoughts regarding uh, the trajectory, as you know, of Fernando's work uh, over the next period of time uh, leading to the end of his thesis? Do you have any uh, thoughts on, on his work and how it may progress? Any advice that you might have for uh, Fernando? Yeah, and maybe we take 15 minutes or so. I'm not sure, 15, 20 minutes. Perhaps there are also questions from the audience here. but. Uh, I, I think we're really interested if you have advices for uh, Fernando. Yeah, sure. I'd be, I'd be really short, actually. Um, I think, uh, Fernando, you have to um, really think about, about this, uh, this idea of, uh, of um, a bottom-to-top approach because uh, um, it's uh, not really 100% clear, actually, to me what... Um, you um, mean in terms of composition or research? Both actually, because I, I I don't think you're you're really you are really actually reasoning like bottom to top. I think you are doing something different, which which I think is great, but it's not exactly what uh, what you are describing. Uh, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. and 
uh, if I may say, for example, uh, um, the last research project, like using, using Markov chains, for example, mm -hmm. uh, I, think, I think it would be a really interesting option, actually, to explore because, um, uh, as, I mean, as, uh, from, from what I saw, uh, I mean, you have different approaches actually to granular synthesis. Like, for example, you have the Xenakis one, which is, uh, uh, it, I mean, it's all like a, his first Xenakis period or so. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, uh, but basically, it's a, it's it's a it's a top to bottom approach because uh, it's it's the uh, it's it's the quintessence of uh, stochastic. It, it's really yeah. top to bottom because basically you're describing rules and. Uh, uh, yeah. There's no way like a, a movement of uh, one pizzicato or one sine wave is, is, is influencing whatsoever. So it, it's really top to bottom. And uh, then you have this like a self-organizing things of uh, of uh, Agostino Di Scipio, for example. Yes. Uh, so, for example, using uh, feedback systems, uh, uh, or you can have something similar. I, I, I was thinking about that also using. Uh, cellular automata for example yeah, when when course. you really have a local rules that creates uh, that, that create like a very uh, complex uh, behavior which is really like an emergence of uh, of, yeah. of, of of a very local thing a very little tiny local thing uh, yes. and then you have your approach which is uh, uh, yeah i don't know i don't know really where where, where, where it is but uh, i think uh, I mean, I repeat myself because I already, already said that in the beginning. I think uh, the most important thing for you is really the buffer, actually. Uh, it's, yeah. it's really the starting point of everything. And if you are like starting to use Markov chains, basically what you're doing, uh, what you can do is that you are uh, actually taking rules that are already inside the buffer because, I mean, you are like... A, a, yeah. like when you calculate the Markov matrix, so you're calculating a matrix of probabilities. Of probabilities, yeah. For, yeah, and, and then buffer. everything everything is like issued in, in, in a way from from the buffer. And then you can start to manipulate the probabilities and... and yes. Uh, so so I, yes. I think it's a, I think it would be a fruitful uh, uh, direction. Uh, uh, project, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I... Yeah. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Ah, cool. No, no. So I want just to clarify. I, I, don't, I didn't say that I have uh, one particular to, uh, way to approach composition, which is bottom to top. There is part to approach part of the process of the composition on which, in the way that I'm manipulating some uh, sounds, are more bottom to top. But of course, it is a local. Uh, uh, it's a localized uh, aspect of a process. Then I'm 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 not dogmatic, so <laughs> it's not yeah, that yeah, I'm yeah. just thinking about. So yeah, of course. Uh, but you are uh, yeah, yeah, you are right. Of course that I'm I'm seeing potential contradictions in some in some aspects. I hope that they will be fruitful. <laughs> but the idea of this research so is to make explicit the implicit. So if there is also even contradiction, maybe that, that could help to composition, but not to correct that because it's a it's a kind of axiomatic uh, truth, but because yeah. maybe it triggers me more ideas. Yeah, yeah. It was just a remark. I mean, there's no yeah. there's no right and wrong <laughs> because of course, of course, no, 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 of course. Finally, but I mean, you're writing music, so it's, uh, it's yeah, uh, of course. No, but it's. it's you 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 see it well. There is this ambiguity between levels of of approaching, mm. and of course, is um, there is also top to bottom things about already uh, as, as stochastical repartition is, is as you say a top as a top as a top to bottom. Uh, but maybe this uh, conception that you see very well of of that the buffer is the central aspect of the work. Uh, in within the buffer uh, on which I am starting, I am starting with uh, ten seconds stuff, which takes me time to think because I must to already try to project uh, on time or to to have a vision of of the buffer and that the buffer has a potential of of projection. Okay, uh, but I am starting for for. I don't. I don't start for a whole form 
on which I'm then <laughs> uh, filling up. Uh, I have this, I have possible path and emerging operations also. Uh, but of course, it, some, some pieces are very uh, top, top to bottom in the way that I, they are automatized as, as this little piece that I show. Mm, yeah. uh, and you are uh, right that uh, it could be interesting and also you are right to evoke uh, automatons because I, I was in this piece that you mentioned, uh, Dynamogram, on which the, um, the reference is, uh, is parts of the, uh, of the Adagetto of uh, Seventh Symphony. Uh, with the with the help of of Daniel Sea, which worked with me uh, at Grame, which commissioned the piece, uh, he helped me to go through uh, a Markov system. But at the beginning, I was thinking also in, uh, <laughs> in uh, the possibility of uh, out, uh, uh, of automata, of cellular automata. Um, but uh, in this piece, uh, the part of of, of uh, Markov chains uh, uh, based, uh, so the, the sounds that we build, uh, that we modeling uh, with Daniel just uh, experimented. And once that I had the idea more clear and the parameters that I start to compose, did w that was a part of the, of the resultant uh, uh, buffer. But um, my idea was not uh, more than to have uh, different paths. My idea was, uh, at the end, was most Im more important how we conditioned the result that, uh, well, of course, Markov, because uh, regarding the, the, the order of, of the Markov chain, and the, in the, we use AC toolbox, this uh, Polberg um, program, on which you can have uh, a degree of, of approaching this, the original source. So my idea was being around this source, but at the end it was more important how to reproduce that because we have conditioned as uh, one of the voices that reconstituted uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, from Beethoven uh, sounds that, that we are was uh, I don't know, uh, compressing an octave with quarter tones, other just with uh, two kind of rhythms which were ins inspired on, on Greek food, so long or short. And other was uh, we could re um, uh, distribute the, uh, statistically the appearance of this uh, uh, Markov generated uh, stuff. Uh, in, in a way on which my imagination was, I want to have a complex object which has several dimensions of reconstitutions on which the, there is the, the, the reference part that was generated with Markov with, uh, for the instrumentation, and an, another part which is, is noisy, but it's also the buffer and is relating with some uh, similar uh, uh, and recurrent um, uh, pitches or, or or other ways of relation, but my my first uh, vision was I want to have uh, kind of uh, tonal clouds of little sounds, very fast, uh, but not tonal because they were functional, uh, tonal because of the color. Mm -hmm. And so at the end we uh, we start with Markov, but the way that I that 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 I use it, I condition the algorithm. Uh, yeah, it was more related to to this paradigm, but in this case, it was top to bottom, of course. <laughs> but at the same time, the other part of the of this buffer was the kind of bottom to top because I start with a little buffer and I was developing in parallel. So, uh, but uh, well, I'm happy that you evoke cellular automata because w that's one that's one. Uh, it was one of the um, of the methods that I thought in order to uh, um, uh, um, generate notes, so beats yeah. and rhythms yeah. to be played, uh, starting from um, an object on which the cultural weight is 
because I mean it's, it's allegretto symphony. Normal, <laughs> a, 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 a musician knows that. So my idea is how do it will affect it. They will hear how fast the reference uh, to that. And uh, yes, I I mean aesthetically, if I can uh, uh, pronounce this word, uh, <laughs> yeah. aesthetically the the the. The whole idea is to 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 reconstruct uh, to reconstitute an an object which is cut up of its original context and to create a new one which is which even the the rules that serve me to do it or or maybe in Twitterly I'm trying to infer it from the from the object. Great. So thanks. Yeah, uh, do, do you know actually um, uh, Bernard Lang is using a cellular automata? Ah, I didn't know. Ah, well, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He, he's influencing me more. So. Yeah, he, he is actually. Uh, I mean, there's there's very few. Um, th th there are not so many articles about about that, and everything is in German. <laughs> so, uh, but um, but yes, there is something. Yeah, there is something in English. That I uh, honestly, I, I, I we already I already told you that. Uh, the uh, the idea was of having also cellular automata. I didn't found very interesting uh, arts <laughs> mm. uh, using that in sound based composition, of course, sound based artwork, uh, more more uh, exercise or playings. But there was one piece that really triggered me, uh, really influenced me. Was your piece on with cellular automata the piece that you use? Also, Le Mio, no? If I recall. Yeah, yeah exactly. Also, Le Mio. <laughs> <laughs> That's the starting point. So, when I hear this piece, I, of course, you have your way on your approach, but I feel that I was there was a similarity in the difference, of course, but uh, of of this idea of to start up with this and then. Uh, yeah, give yeah, yeah. To that. Because I'm actually using Also, Le Mio as a sort of buffer. Uh, and then the cellular automata is like reading uh, reading the buffer because I mean m most of the time uh, like the cellular proliferation is uh, is uh, by proximity. Uh, yeah, so yeah. it's like basically it's like reading, uh, yeah, reading. Uh, yeah, yeah. When when you have the okay. graphics on on the on this early life uh, play, you can see how they are multiplying and always by by proximity of. of yeah, of yeah the exactly. Self. So so basically you reconstruct the buffer because. Uh, yeah. 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 It's kind of granular. But did you, in the writing, it was by ear, or, or I mean, the the thing that you start with pizzicato and then uh, all that your it was your your. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's very strict actually. It's, uh, ah, yeah? it's yeah, it's very algorithmic. Ah, so even the more the playing was uh, defined by okay. Uh, yeah, kind wow. of yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, of course, great. with some uh, with some minor adjustment because of uh, playability, but. Uh, but really yeah, you uh, always. Yeah, not that much. Okay. Super. It was very um, helpful. Thanks for okay. your advices and yeah, I, your th thank insights. You. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mike. Other... <laughs> thank, thank you, Moro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are there any other questions or comments from um, people in our attendance? Kent, did you? Hi, Kent. <laughs> hi, Mauro. <laughs> hi, Mauro. Well, it's a little worth. <laughs> yeah, hey, hi. Nice to see you. Hi, there. I was expecting you to be here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, good to see you. And thanks for, for uh, the presentation and your discussion with uh, Fernando. Hey, um, I think I'm, uh, I'm, I'm uh, now also thinking uh, about uh, like also the research here because I mean you have, as you say, worked a lot uh, with this granular technique and mm. that I find very uh, fascinating. It's very interesting and also what, what comes out. So, so. Uh, but um and you 
or also as you have been shown like also working also uh, taking that to other media like yeah. the, like the video in particular yeah. or into to so and and also after the concert last night so i think what what is uh, and a lot of great works and it was really interesting with the feedback piece uh, that, that you showed uh, yesterday of course now with the research project it's really like uh, uh it would be interesting uh, i mean to you're suggesting some things here but even more like where you uh, will actually dig in i'm thinking of i mean w of this granular things that you i mean you actually have uh, as you have presented i mean actually how you work now yeah but if we just look into that where uh, or where can you continue to research that i mean to, to the pieces i mean of course there is uh, you have a little bit of suggestion but even more like specific feel how where you actually have questions how to develop I mean, on on what you already know. I mean, possible research questions Outcomes, now, yeah. or where you can actually uh, continue to investigate. Uh, yeah, what you already have, so, yes, so to speak. Yes. I mean, you uh, you have some small details, but I think I'm also thinking larger now because we've been talking quite a lot about uh, the. I mean, the relation to the buffer and the object and yes. so on. But but even like, um, like artistic research projects now that can extend what you so to say already know yeah but, uh, th yeah thank you for i think that maybe the i i i, f I could draw more in a general way this this uh question of the these compositional strategies that are inspired the idea was not to that this uh, particular topic becomes the subject but to approach with this topic a more general subject of the feedbacking and interacting and overlapping of of of, of uh, practice and how the sound based techniques are applied in others but also then to observe how they influence me uh, so the idea in a bottom to top uh, strategy of research is that i'm i know that i have a kind of theoretical frame from a starting point uh, but uh, the thing is really to observe on the practical level and then try to uh, go to a more epistemic level uh, if that so mm. granular uh, paradigm to me was the the most uh, logical way to start of course but then in my research project they will be more diverse because as you hear i had done a piece which is based uh, is instrumental feedback in a way hmm. but as you saw there is also uh, the voices with the quotation of bruce nauman uh, text on uh, good boy yes yes uh, yeah, there, yeah there are certainly many parts in, in yeah in, yeah in the so works as such and i'm just thinking also here that um because now when we of course doing the research is it's also a way of also bringing forth i mean the the techniques and methods and, and things that you're actually working with. Uh, so also now to find, I mean, you've been presenting and it's, um, I mean, it's quite clear to me. I'm, I'm not always sure. I mean, if we also think of sharing uh, yeah. these things with, with other uh, composers and musicians and researchers and, and, and other, um, also how to actually share yeah. your uh, your yeah. work. And, and, and maybe it actually is a good, I mean, I mean you're talking about the video article, but that's a, a little bit different, but also how to actually uh, uh, also present, like yeah, maybe on on like research catalog on web of based, course. but really to to with the example really, so we can really follow also the steps. And I think by doing that also that can also make a, a way also uh, to clarify also the, for you further steps. Yeah, in um, in the research pro uh, pro because as, as you say, there are also many uh, many things that you are. Or diving into that, there are text. I mean, the the, the text-based, uh, you, you, the references you are using in different way, like the text, the video you're yeah. picking up. I mean, the found objects, yes. at one part, and of course, th then we have the technique on the on the uh, uh, granular or like the Markov chain. So maybe it could also be an idea to, like, also look into the different parts each, in each but yeah. because you, you as you say you're often talking about the <laughs> everything at the same time so i think i mean for the i mean and that is how we work as composers but i think for the project 
to be able to dive in also to to really dive into specific parts and write about them because they are interesting i think by doing that you will also see more uh, oh. I hope. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you will. But <laughs> no, I, think no, actually, sure. I think that can be a good idea, actually, and I was thinking of it, but because they are um, they are complex, each product. Yes. It, it can be an idea just to continue to unpack them also. I mean, yeah. why are you using certain references? Like, uh, you, mean you, had, you had a lot of great <laughs> yeah, examples yeah. yesterday. So maybe also looking into that, I'm thinking now to... to yeah, to unpack re really the different parts of, of, of your work. Yeah, uh, yeah well, the, the, the bottom to top uh, is the idea to f focus mm. on concrete observations mm. on, on, the, on, on the work and to have this first continent, which is very wide. I'm, I am aware of that. You know, this uh, extended composable space is, is a very wide... It's for that, it's a, a starting point more than a theoretical frame in a way. Yeah. Uh, but the idea is, uh, I will, of course, write several papers, but I will not address a whole of my practice because it's very diverse. No, 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 you shouldn't do that, of course. But of I course. really think that also by exploring the composable spaces, also to to like look from now from like different different, different of, sides, with yeah, yeah, well different that, lenses, you must say in 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 how that. So you kind of uh, look into different parts of your practice now. Yeah, well, and then you put everything together yeah. again in the end. Yeah. Uh, uh, that is, uh, I mean, uh, it has been great this presentation on the concert yesterday because it really, I mean, I've, of course, I know your work since before, but it's really something to now finally actually hear a full concert. And thanks to the ensemble, it was really great yesterday. Oh, so enough. you give, <laughs> uh, I mean, and uh, we've been talking and you present, but it also gives a lot now when like hearing a lot of pieces at the same time. Yeah, hear you talk about it. it uh, it's giving me also. So I'm really thinking of this to, to I mean, I mean, as uh, uh, advising it that way to yeah. also look at just certain parts. I think of the project uh, to 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 um, yeah to be able uh, actually to dive down because yeah, as of you, course, uh, as, and, um, because if you s try to look at everything at the same time, right, that, that yeah, it, it, it's, it almost becomes a bit too wide all the yes, time and that yes. should be so the art project later on when everything is put together of course yeah yeah, yeah. you see you are seeing very clear it's for that that, I, that it was uh, it, that it, uh, um, i was very fast conscious that i had not to go from an epistemic level and go down that i had to start with simple observations yes. and uh, the first year was more trying to experiment and, and found different methodologies which could be adequate to each of them. It's for that that I'm also starting with two very different projects because I will experiment very different methodological approach because in this video article it was a bit more ad auto-ethnographic yes, uh, yes. kind of uh, methodology. And in the project with Thomas uh, Person, I forget to, oh, sorry, it's also with Pablo Santoniadis, the piano, the piano player. <laughs> we are three on the project. Mm. Uh, and in the other experiment, uh, uh, modeling more uh, kind of uh, research methodology. Yeah. So I am at the same time learning about methodologies and trying to see, as you see, the, the to identify and um, to, I, I, I hope that the next year I will arrive to a sort of, sort of a map <laughs> of that that helps me to, 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 yeah. Uh, and along with what Ken said, um, you could also uh, test or examine your different methods, uh, the windowing, the buffering, the different overlapping time scales. You can you can test them in terms of perception. In terms of acoustics, so you can you can actually make measures that are that are uh, uh, examining your intuition, mm. right? The the um, the robustness of the different configurations that you're putting together. So yeah. that's also something that's possible for the future, and we can talk about that as well. But good, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, any other questions or comments? Thank you. <laughs> it's many, maybe just five minutes. It will be a bit short to talk about it. But uh, uh, you mentioned the gestalt of even the cell, right? Even the the very short motive. 
how do you conceive it in in general, I would say that it would represent the poetics of the work, finally, right? Or, or the artistic, artistical aspect of what this micro... How do you conceive the gestalt from, the, from within, right? From the yeah. buffer, from, yeah. from the game. Well, I, I, I use the, the word gestalt because sometimes in order to clarify and protect on time, I'm thinking very simple. Uh, so if, if it's a figure is going up or down, or just <laughs> staying and which kind of color and if it's going to from noise to so it's for that that I I I, I know that the the world has uh, resonance yes, sure. <laughs> that are wider, mm -hmm. but I try I, I use also figures I did yeah, but also in the sense that making reference to the global piece as because you mentioned that you were conceiving those like ten seconds in term to become ten minutes right. And when you conceive those 10 seconds, like with the vision of the larger scale, one, mm. once you are conceiving the, the shorter one, right? Yes, that so is the idea. there is a sort of gestalt notion yes. in, in the little cell in order to build the larger. Yes. Right? The, it's not defined the um, exact amount of time on which I will develop. Mm -hmm. But yes, there is this kind of project. And I didn't thought that in a theoretical way. I was just creating, experimenting, and seeing and hearing, and uh, and and reshaping. So, uh, and when I I am thinking about that, uh, you know, in the reality, you have so many inputs <laughs> in your head that it depends on on which vision and you know the point of view of the that you are approaching the the a particular topic or or problem. But uh, yes. The idea is to condense already in the buffer his potential projection. So there is also this relation between object and operation, which is, as Mauro say, very influenced by the by Johnny, who was very influenced by object-oriented mm -hmm. programming. Yeah. So you have conceiving the object aesthetically. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, it's tough to this, to say this word here and this ambience, but yes, because I'm thinking about the reference, the noise. And I know that is uh, how you deploy in time a, 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 a sound object who has a lot of cultural reference. Well, there is no object without, without but, but there is more heavy ones. And so the resultant uh, perception, and of course, it depends on the background of, of every listener, but I know that I'm using at the same time more kind of neutral, and I repeat, there is no neutral, there is no no cultural reference object because if we are doing kind of noise, we can we have we are doing a reference to the historical uh, um, 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 advance and on, on writing. So, um, but yes, it's it's it's, it's aesthetic. This uh, yeah, <laughs> is that <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Are there any questions from the par the uh, observers, the viewers on Zoom? Uh, you, if there are any questions, you could uh, type them into the chat window. Ah, well, if there are. <laughs> quickly, quickly. If there, uh, I don't know if are they, there any they... other comments uh, in the meantime? Uh, I think the, the most interesting uh, part for me personally uh, on your on your research is uh, to the application of this granular paradigm uh, to hybrid and other media stuff. Mm -hmm. And I guess it, this is going to be very um, encouraging and very uh, fascinating because and by doing that you will find a lot of things that you will feed back again into your uh, compositional uh, Oh, it, yeah, and yeah. like writing music. So uh, it, I guess f for me, developing that part could be uh, very uh, inspiring. Uh, how to apply this, uh, not only the, perhaps the granular paradigm, but other paradigms of that are Some stolen basic. or borrowed from electronic music composition into uh, the world. Into other medias, yeah. With other media such as. Well, architecture, installation, uh, of course. video, 
and even the text yeah, good yeah. thing. Yeah, it's a, it's a good observation and uh, and it's a little bit the idea. It may be that during the, the, the research, uh, one of the things that I thought that was a local and focused maybe became larger and effective. I, I don't know, I'm trying to leave me some freedom because the interesting part of this uh, research uh, uh, department is that uh, allows you to already uh, shape uh, your research, not in a way of doing just a big thesis, which is also interesting, but different um, papers. But maybe after the first uh, or second paper that I finished, I found that I, there is a more strong thing that drives me and I will follow it. Uh, but I think uh, you see right. The main uh, question is this feedback in, uh, uh, that occurs when you are applying, because I am a musician, so <laughs> of course I am not leaving the musician when then I approach an other, uh, other type of, of, of artistic production. But I know that by doing that, I am also modifying my myself and my perception of the uh, uh, of the of the of my own activity. So we have question maybe or there. Okay. I I don't I I am I am kind of blind for the light. Yeah, um, may, yeah, maybe we can. Yeah, it says a lot of talk on the left. Yes, ah, it's Jonah. Uh, okay. On the left. On the left. On the left. Yeah, 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 that one. Okay. okay. Did we have sound yeah. there? Yeah, we have sound. Okay. Hi. <laughs> well, if not, you can maybe write it on the on the maybe chat. The, the microphone is, is cut. Yeah. Ah. Maybe click on the microphone. Yeah, maybe yeah. click on the, or maybe Jonah yeah. click on the microphone. So she has, huh? to, has to turn ah, on. she has to turn on. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Please turn on your microphone. Turn on your microphone so you can you can speak and ask, please. Yeah, it is the icon who is to your left, uh, down, into I your think left. She has to do it, right? Yeah, yeah, she has to. She? Yes, she. She. I don't know, but it, no, no, maybe it's not my name. Maybe it's not. She's not wanting to. She's oh. just commenting. No. Okay. No, maybe there is no questions. Okay. Uh, or, or if not, you can uh, write it down on the chat if it's the case, or if not. We can just finish here. <laughs> she can write, yeah, of course. She left. Ah, she left, okay. okay. <laughs> we scare her. Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much, Moro, yeah, for thanks a lot. your participation. And uh, thank Fernando, you. thanks for thank your you. presentation. And uh, it was a great presentation. I enjoyed this very much. I hope you all did as well. And thank you for coming. Um, Great. Have a good day.